So I'm going to start looking in more detail at the switching power supply for the Model 4P. And I've printed out a couple of uh, pages from the hardware manual that kind of talk about it. And because we're seeing the power supply cycle, we're seeing you know the, the voltage output start to go someplace and then drop off and, and kind of oscillate on and off. That says to me that the startup circuitry is working. So the uh, you know the it's, the kick starts happening. So we're getting some voltage there. These glasses are filthy. Uh, it's not getting up anywhere near five volts or twelve volts. It, it you know it's much lower than that when it kicks back off. So though so. <clears throat> It's not like an over voltage condition. Uh, we've tested the power supply completely out of circuit, so there's no load, and it acts the same way. I'm not sure whether it needs to be loaded to actually come up and operate or not. Uh, if it does, we can uh, throw in a couple of load resistors. But at this point, I'm just going to go through the current limit cycle testing here. And we'll just go through it meticulously, you know, one line at a time and test what it says to test. So, current limit cycle, the first thing is an open diode in BR1. BR1 is this little bridge right here. I'm just going to go ahead and completely remove it from circuit. Just so it's noted, oh, that didn't work well. I have previously discharged. The two large bolt caps on here, I actually did this yesterday. Some people say this is wrong, but I just went ahead and shorted across the bolt caps uh, to make sure that, that they were discharged. So we've got our little bridge rectifier here. So let's think about the uh, bridge here. I haven't drawn a diode bridge in so long. Can I actually draw one? Good question. Let me dig for. So let's, yeah, so current path for one would be through that diode, through the load, through that diode, and back out. Remember, I think in current flow, not conventional flow, and biased in the other direction would be through that diode, through the load, and through that diode now. So I've drawn that right. The only question is, have I got plus and minus current flow has to be Again, so that should be drawn right. So, I haven't tested a diode bridge in a long time. If we go to the positive lead, should I see, oh, come, come on, wow. Nothing wants to work with me here. I can't hold on to it. I see an open and an open. Now I should see a diode and a diode, I believe. So there's one diode forward. There's the other diode forward. So that tested two of the diodes. And now if I go to the negative output, I should see open and open. And then if I reverse the leads again, I should see diode forward and diode forward. It's about 0.5 volts forward. That bridge to me tests out okay. Stupid here, but basically what we've done is we've looked at each diode for forward and reverse bias. We've seen what appear to be four good diodes. I think everything with that bridge is fine. So I think we can solder it back in.
So we've checked off the bridge. It's A-OK. -okay. Next thing is C-29, which is this large filter cap right here. That's a 220 microfarad, 200 volt. Again, we're sure it's discharged, but I know this diode tester itself will automatically discharge. It doesn't care about polarity, it'll figure that out. So 206 microfarads, uh, it's pretty low ESR. So it, it looks to me like a good cap. This one's rated identical. Similar ESR, which probably means it's fine. They're Nishikon. I'm going to leave those out for now. C37 and R40. I want resistance. I don't know if we can measure this in circuit or not. 82 ohms. <clears throat> so that resistor looks absolutely fine. That big old power resistor. There's C37 here. Which the odds are really good that capacitor is fine. shorted inside it would have exploded and it didn't but we'll pop it out and measure it anyhow oh it's small enough it's not going to see it So it's a 102K, so 0 0.001. Yep, it looks just fine from a capacitive standpoint. sure like to find a smoking gun here. Make this a lot easier. Those two look fine. U2, which is the optocoupler. I would have to look up a pinout for it. We know we don't have shorts, but we do have four more diodes to test, and hopefully we can test those in circuit. And there are three of them here. We'll find out. There's diode test. 
There's that continuity. I've got so much glare on the screen it's hard to read. There's diode test. So I should see. Look, it's looking through and seeing a capacitor. Yeah, it's seen a capacitor. Which means I'm probably not going to be able to test these in circuit. completely isolate it. Yeah, it is a different type of, of diode. It's an MBR1035. And these were both MUR810s, it looks like. So that probably explains why it didn't look, well, that would explain why it didn't look like the other two. Open. Quite a short, but it's pretty low resistance. Open, just again, see that point four forward. Open, point four forward. There was one more diode to be tested. Let's see if we can get one lead released. get one leg loose and when I did well bent the leads all up but that's okay and we'll test it it's isolated now I've got one leg pulled up out of the PCB so we'll take a look at it isolated completely open and this should be a forward 0.4 so again a rather typical diode forward I don't see any issues so far. Let me get it back into the board. And that actually looks like the trace lifted. Which doesn't make me happy. Let me get the exacto. Trace didn't lift with the lead being put back in. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it did. So I'm going to expose some of the copper here. Bend the lead over flush into it. Down to a whole slew of oops, 
check the wrong thing. Well, we already know there's not a short. There's a whole bunch of capacitors to be checked. And I guess we're going to need the next step is to drop all those big electrolytics out of here. These were 220, 200. The footprint kind of gives it away. These are 2216. They're all Nishikon caps, which makes me really believe they're all going to be fine. 3316. He is a 2200 6.3. And those two guys are 2210. Let's see, I see plus plus every place on the not seeing on the silk screen, but it's marked here for plus. It's marked there for plus. Oh, it's underneath the cap, it looks like where the plus symbol is. Go ahead and yank all those out. Oh, and wonderful, the leads are bent over on literally all of them. Isn't that useful? previous video we started the work to remove these caps uh, and the tip I had on my desoldering station was too small to really fit over the leads well on the capacitors and so I've replaced that tip with my larger one got a much larger hole and let's see if we can get these to cleanly release now tester. We'll take a peek at these. See what we think. You know that really low ESR may be totally fine. I just don't know. Capacitance, just the ESR as I move through them. So I guess I should actually be checking the capacitance. Thirty-five hundred and twenty. It's a thirty-three hundred. That's very close. Twenty-one oh six. 0.18 ohm, that's interesting. If I look at other 2200s, 
can definitely see, of course it's a smaller physical cap, difference in ESR. And that low in ESR to me looks like a short, but it's not because it's actually measuring capacitance. Yep, that's very near its rating.